Hello and welcome. Wherever you are gathering from, you have found us. And we are celebrating Christmas Eve in 2020. May you know how grateful we are to share this time with you. Let us worship God.
we have gathered with candles in our homes and at the sanctuary advent wreath. We claim that Emmanuel, God with us, is the light of the world. And there is no darkness, no sadness, no fear, no grief, no illness, no loneliness, no violence, no word of unkindness, no act of war, not even a pandemic that can quench the light of the world. Let us light these candles again on this holy night. Here and in our homes, we light the candle of hope. Now there is no place that hopelessness can hide. We light the candle of love. And hands are clasped around the world. We light the candle of joy. And suddenly everyone can find a smile a moment of beauty or laughter. We light the candle of peace and expose hatred as fear turned inside out. My friends, we light the Christ candle. Pray with me. O oh, holy God, we light the Christ candle. It shines on smiles and tears. It shines and we hear angels. It shines and we see a manger. It shines and we remember the story. This light cannot be extinguished because Emmanuel, you are the candle tonight. And we promise to be your candles tomorrow.
gather from our homes, yet still we gather to hear again the old, old story of a stable and a baby born to a peasant couple alone and far from home. It's a story we have heard for as long as we can remember. We have images from a hundred pictures from our own imaginations of what the stable was like or of Mary's face and how she held that baby and how the shepherds came. This story is so wrapped up in our own Christmas past that it has become part of us. It is our history now, too. We have had years of singing it, imagining it, reading it, seeing it acted out by generations of children, celebrating it. And these things have made it ours. But this story is not ours alone. It connects us with 20 centuries of the faithful who have sat year after year hearing it and making it their own. There is a power here in what we do tonight. It is the power of eternity touching a moment in time. It is the power of God becoming real for us once more. The story starts with the decision of an emperor to conduct a census. As is so often the case, when the powerful make a decision, the powerless have their lives changed. 2,000 miles away, peasant families paid a price. A betrothed couple in a little town called Nazareth, a town the emperor had never heard of, was one of these. A young woman, almost still a girl, after facing the disgrace of pregnancy leaves home on a journey with a struggling tradesman. They are betrothed, but the child she will soon bear is not his. Their trip is taken at the wrong time. She is nearing the time of labor. The ground is hard. The wind is biting cold. It is a long trip for poor people who have to walk most of the way. They are alone. There is no one to help or comfort strangers on the road. There is nothing to stop the pangs of labor when they come. And so, on a cold night, a hundred miles from home, they come into a town that does not seem hospitable to strangers from far off places. In a world that does not seem hospitable to poor and homeless people. They come to Bethlehem. We can picture the shepherds dancing off across the fields to the rhythm of music no one else can hear. Who knows exactly what they saw or experienced that night? But they responded, cavorting down the hillsides and with their feet hardly touching the ground until they stumbled upon a miracle. Only those few shepherds were there for the birth of light that banishes the shadow, for the coming of a new kind of leader. The rest of the town slept through it. 
the rest of the world just went about its business. They never heard any angels. The difference is this. The shepherds were waiting and watching and willing to follow. Many of them were amazed at what they saw. May we do the same. Open our minds for mystery. Widen our eyes for awe. And clear our ears for the music of God's world. Remember the angels? They came quietly to Zechariah, to Mary, and to Joseph, and noisily to the shepherds out in their fields, filling the sky with their light and their song of peace. In our rational and modern world, it's hard to imagine a sky full of angels. How many of us have heard their song high and wild on a starlit night or known their touch of mystery? Maybe, maybe more than we think. Maybe something had, has buoyed us up when hopelessness had us in its grip. Maybe there's been a time when some barely noticed tap on the shoulder awakened us to a moment of great beauty, a great courage. Or maybe the angels of our time are not so subtle at all. Maybe we are angels to each other. That friend who held your hand through the longest night of your life. The stranger whose smile was timed just right to redeem a bad day. The acquaintance whose message came at just the right moment. Maybe messengers of God are all around us. Maybe the heavens open every day whenever love makes our lives richer or more wonderful. The angels who are messengers remind us. Those startled shepherds walked bedazzled across the fields at night to find a miracle. What they find is an ordinary baby. King Herod trembles in his palace at the thought of a rival. What he's afraid of is just an ordinary baby. Magi travel a thousand miles to witness a cosmic event. What they see is an ordinary baby. The wrinkled skin, the cute little fingers and toes, the little arms and legs pushing and pulling at the air in a dance of discovery the crying, the cuddling, the new moment of life. And the story asks us this. Can the holy come to us in the ordinary? 
Does God meet us in the midst of our unremarkable lives? And can we recognize this gift when it comes? And so, listen to the story as it is written in our scripture. And sing the hymns we have been singing for a hundred years. What is this story saying to you this night? Our gospel reading tonight, Luke, in those days, the crowd out for the was taken while the the God of Our gospel reading tonight will be Luke chapter 2, lines 1 through 5. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. because there was no place for them in the end. shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news 
of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah. The this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherd returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. As it had taught Friends, let us pray together. Oh God, we give you thanks this night for the old story that we know and yet still can surprise us. We give you thanks for all the images and the pictures in our imaginations and memory of Christmas as we've experienced it together, as we've experienced it individually. We pray that you would speak to us through those memories and images and pictures, whether they bring us joy or grief or wistfulness or wonder. Speak to us, we pray, 
your message that you are the God who comes to us. In that stable, with those parents, and in our lives, the love that has shaped and molded us. Speak to us about how you have always been coming to us, and even in isolation will come to us still. Oh God, we pray for the powerful who make decisions and for all who are affected by them. May rulers govern wisely with wisdom and courage and compassion. And may those who are in precarious circumstances know that you will always find them will always help them. We pray for those who dwell in a world that does not seem hospitable to them because of broken relationships, because of cultural realities, those who have experienced being outside or feeling alone or not belonging. And God, teach us what hospitality means Teach us the wideness of your welcoming heart that we might offer such welcome to all whom we encounter. Teach us, O oh God, to dance to your wild and free music to cavort down the hillsides of our lives when circumstances call for it. Teach us to be people who are not afraid to rejoice and to delight and to risk gladness. Teach us to hear the music you are singing in our hearts, even on the darkest days. And give us eyes to see our own miracle this season. For we long to see evidence that you come to us in our ordinary lives. Help us not simply to go about our business and to sleep through it. Help us not to miss the miracle you have sent our way this night. In a moment of silence, we offer the prayers we cannot bring to voice. And then together, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his friends, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This season has been unlike any we have known. Though church on TV has been around for a while, we've never before recorded Christmas Eve worship to be viewed from home. Yet here we are. And the story we are telling is the same story. I'm sure each of us has had Christmases that were different from others. Christmas after a death, Christmas with a spouse and their family. Christmas with a baby in the house. Christmas where kids must be delivered to the other parent. Christmas with cancer treatments or during war and rationing. Christmas in another country. Wherever we have been, whatever has been going on in each of our lives, 
Still, Christmas comes. I think of the words of the Grinch when he hears the Who's singing after he has stolen their Christmas trappings. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled and puzzled till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. What if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more? We are here tonight because we believe Christmas means a little bit more. Even though we can't gather, even though we can't light candles and stand together and sing Silent Night, even though we can't drink cocoa and eat cookies in the fellowship hall, even though, still, Christmas comes. Christ has come and is coming. And we remember that today. We light the Christ candle. We read the story of God coming to earth in a fragile bit of humanity. And we sing. Throughout Advent, we've been watching documentaries that show us how people use music to resist, to make the world better. And we have been singing Advent hymns and Christmas carols, remembering the beloved songs and the challenging circumstances, the unique Christmases in which they were written. Tonight, though we are not gathered together on the plaza, still we sing Silent Night, written by a priest in the German of the people rather than the Latin of the church, with music composed for the guitar at the last moment because of flooding and concerns about the organ. Silent Night has drawn people together and offered a message of peace since its creation. Sung by opposing soldiers in the trenches in World War I and by world leaders at the White House during World War II, it is considered a world peace song and was declared an intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO in 2011. This song is an offering to that infant so tender and mild. And so tonight, still we sing. As we conclude this service, we invite you to light a candle wherever you are and sing Silent Night, Holy Night. Christ the 
And now, friends, I charge you to go out to be candles, to share the light that is yours and let it shine. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the constant friendship of God's own spirit descend upon you and those you love and dwell with you today and always, amen.